Hi everyone, I'm Bernardo Moy, I'm the founder of The Best You, author of The Question, and uh, well, I'm, I'm extremely excited, delighted, and honored to be speaking to Carrie Conley today. And uh, I'm gonna, hey Carrie, how are you? I'm great, could not be better. Brilliant, brilliant, I love that. So uh, Car Carrie is a speaker, she's an author, she's a co-founder of Infinite Nation. Uh, she's also the co-creator of the inspired community, Infinite Nation, and she's carved out a niche helping others to identify their desires and define their goals through vision building. Very important. She's dedicated mm -hmm. to helping you identify your dreams and goals through vision building and to achieve those goals through discovering your purpose. Uh, for some of you that may or may not know, my book is called The Question, mm -hmm. Find Your True Purpose. There's nothing, I don't think, there's nothing more important than helping people find their purpose because there's so many yeah. lost goals out there. Mm -hmm. um, so she believes that success in life is about following your true passion. I love that. And knowing what impact you're here to make in the world. So Kerry draws from more than two decades of experience in growing two businesses, decades of being a wife and a mum, uh, and her personal journey, which is, you know, filled with tragedies. Um, and she shares, um, she shares this with her audience. She's a, she's a phenomenal lady. And so she can relate when it comes down to obviously helping people connect and, and identify what their vision can or can't be. So Gary, share. Now, that's obviously kind of the, the official intro. I always like asking the questions kind of like, you know, tell us who you are, tell yep. us what you do and how yep. you help people. So if you can summarize yep. that better than I can, that would be amazing. Absolutely. Um, hi, everybody. I'm honored to be here. And uh, I, I share what I do kind of from my story. Uh, my husband and I uh, met in high school, graduated it with both business degrees. And this was in the 80s, because that's what you did. And we both went into, you know, corporate jobs, which my husband excelled at. I did not fit the nine to five mold. And most of you who are entrepreneurs get that. Um, so along my journey, I met a woman who really encouraged me to figure out what I wanted my life to look like and, you know, go from there. So I took an entire day off of work one day with a legal pad of paper, cause this was the late eighties. So it was way before, you know, computers, cell phones, iPads, all of that. And I got very, very quiet with myself that day. And I wrote in detail what I envisioned my life to look like. If I were to wave my magic wand, what would I want? And what I want is to be able to, what I wanted was to be able to stay home with my family. Uh, I wanted, we didn't have children that, then yet, but I knew we would. And uh, I wanted to have my own schedule. So I knew a lot of different ideas of what I might want to go into, things around maybe health and wellness or in marketing, which was my background. Really had no idea what it was. But on the very last line, for some reason, I wrote that someday I wanted to be a speaker on vision and goal setting. No idea where that came from, but I think it's just because I was finally listening to the universe telling me this is, this is what I have in store for you. So fast forward a little bit, uh, a couple years later, I had my son who was two and I was pregnant with my daughter. And I was introduced to a company in the network marketing world called Arbon, and I jumped all in because it fit all of the things that I envisioned my life to look like. And for 20 some years, uh, went to the top of that company. And then seven years ago, started speaking and training on the one thing that I came to realize that I had to train my entire team to do, which was first and foremost, do what I did, which was get in writing in detail, a vision of what they wanted their life to look like. Because if they didn't have it, they were going to quit. They were going to hit all the bumps in the road and they were going to be gone. So I started doing little mini workshops and then I wrote my first book, Vision is Victory, and started speaking. And now that's what I do. I help people get their vision out of their head and onto paper. So it makes a well, big difference. Uh, we met um, at an event. I think it was the Think and Grow Rich uh, yes. world tour. We met in Dallas, didn't we? And, yes. Um, and I remember, well, we, we kind of like connected very quickly Yes. Uh, with, with obviously with your vision, with your mission, with what you do, and obviously mm -hmm. me appreciating how important it is to help people with a vision. Now, do you mind sharing your, your story? Because obviously, you know, sure. it, it obviously, um, you know, reinforced, uh, I, I believe, uh, not only reinforced and, and made you the amazing lady you are now, mm -hmm. 
uh, through through the adversity you've gone because you know these scars are are there for a reason, but they you know they make us stronger. You've got a, a, an amazing story. Yes, well, um, I, I think. I don't think, I know there is a reason why the universe told me that someday I was going to be really speaking on this topic and leading a movement around helping people find their vision and their purpose is because along this journey, unfortunately, five years ago, I lost my husband to suicide and then three years later, lost my son. So in the past five years, we have my, obviously my daughter is now 25 and married and expecting her first baby. So my daughter and I have been on a journey of a lot of adversity and I am now so much more passionate like you are Bernardo to really help people know why they matter that they have a purpose most people feel like there's something there they should be doing but they're not following it and so unfortunately for some people they can get really really lost and so now I'm really on a mission to bring uh, this whole message forward because it's so needed well, I, I th and I agree with you. I, th I think part of the challenges is that, you know, we, we receive limited education in school, which obviously doesn't really help us right. very little with any aspects of life. If at all. <laughs> because, yeah. at, at all, because anything you need is on Google or on your phone anyway. Um, right. But, you know, we're not teaching the necessary skills. And I think that's what happens is, you know, people come out of life and then at the end of the day, there's responsibilities, either fatherhood or, you know, paying the rent. And they've just got to pay the bills. And then obviously they right. just get in this rat race of, 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 of literally just living uh, right. without really looking or potentially understanding what their purpose is in life. Well, what is it they're here to do? So I, I, I completely understand. And, and, and that's kind of one of the challenges. And I believe that obviously one of the, of the beautiful things that you do. So what would you, what, what would you, how would you define, you know, kind of what it takes, you know, to, to, to help people find their purpose? What, what is the best way to help people find what their purpose is? Mm. Well, the exercise that I've created and have put thousands of people through speaking and my workbook and workshops and et cetera, um, starts at the top and starts at the beginning where I did, where I, like I told you, sat down with an entire day to myself, no distractions, which in this world is a very big problem. Um, and I just really went within and listen to what I really wanted, what I saw, what I, if I could, like I said earlier, if I could wave my magic wand, what would my life look like? And I, and I know right now, because like you said, Bernardo, no, this isn't taught in schools to this day. Uh, and quite frankly, the exact opposite happens. So instead of taking, let's say a five or six year old little human who knows at that point kind of who they are and what they love to do and what they're what excites them, what makes them happy, what their dreams are when they want to grow up. What we do is take them through a system of, you know, saying, well, that's, that's cute. Like I wanted to be a singer. My family thought, you know what, that's cute, <laughs> but you're going to get a degree and um, you're going to find a good job and you're going to work yourself up the ranks. And you, and can, like, sing, and you can sing in the shower. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In the car, you know, anywhere else. But yeah, you're not going to do that. Um, and I think, unfortunately, we still have that system. So we take somebody and we tell them this is great. But by middle school, we start saying, okay, well, here's the careers that we think are going to be flourishing when you graduate. So, you know, we want you to get the best grades. We want you to get all the, the accolades, you know, all the awards, go to the best college, come out, get a, get a job in that field, and then you'll be happy. And what I know, because I work with a lot of um, young adults right now, is a lot of them come out about six months to a year out. They're looking around going, okay, this is it. Like, this is everything I've been trained for my entire life. And they're, they're so empty inside that they don't really know. If when I ask them, what do you see your life looking like three years from now, which is the first thing I tell people is, let's look three years out. Most of them can't even think three months. So the first point, the first tool. But, but, but some, some people don't even think ahead. I mean, I'm just saying is, is yeah. that they don't think about, you're saying three months, but some people don't, oh, well, I've never actually sat down to yes. start thinking what else I would like to do, do they? Right, so, yeah. no. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So they never think ahead. So one of the things I do in my workshop that's pretty powerful is I get them to get out a piece of paper. And at the top of the piece of paper, I have them write the date as if it's three years from today. So that gets them to look a little forward because we've got two non-negotiables in life. One is time, 
right? 24 hours in a day, we can't change that. And the second thing is aging. You know, if you and I agreed to come back on this webinar three years from today, Bernardo, we'd both be three years older. Yep. Um, and three years for me is a really big number. So what happens when I get people to think about that and realize that that is true, that that really is going to happen, God willing, they start seeing some shifts coming in their life. Organically, there's some shifts that happen about every three to five years, specifically, um, not only with your own ages, but with the kids of, you know, your kids' ages, grandkids, maybe even older people in your life, like your parents and grandparents. We start seeing that there's some things coming. And, you know, three years goes like that. So when I get them to project forward and start writing out as if it's three years, like I did envisioning every little detail of what I wanted it to look like, it starts revealing to them some things that are aligning with their true purpose and, so, and a lot that's not. So it's just kind of the first step to really let that start bubble up. Is it kind of like a timeline, how you help people? Is it like a timeline? Yeah, so once I get them to write a letter, so the next tool I get them to do is to write a letter to somebody as if it's that, that three year out date and they haven't talked to that person in the past three years. So they're giving them every detail of what their life, what's happened in their life, where they're living, trips they've taken, how old their kids are, you know, uh, what they're doing, uh, what they see coming. So it gets them to write in detail like I did um, in every facet of their life, what they want to create it to look like. Then once we've got the three-year vision, we can take that and reverse engineer it. So when I work with clients and they give me their three-year vision, I'm able to take that and break it into, okay, let's talk about what your strategy is for one year from now. So we start putting on a timeline as uh, like I'm doing right now with a lot of people because we're about to turn over the new year. Um, you know, what's happening now and where do you project being this time next year? Very quantitatively as specific as possible so that we can now break it down into quarters over 2020. And that shows them, okay, by quarter where they should be. It gives them timelines and things to shoot for. Target dates, big missing element for most people. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and obviously with, 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 by doing that, then what happens is, is by, by providing people you know, a, a clearer vision, which is kind of one of the questions that we were talking about. So, so one, by providing them kind of a clearer vision, when they do have struggles, when, when adversity yes. does come their way, yeah. because, you know, it's life, you know, yep. it's more bearable or it is bearable or yeah. you can deal with it because you have a clear vision and you have a clear purpose. So you just understand that that's just part of the journey. Yes. Yeah, so, right? yeah. So when I talk to people about why vision, when I do a workshop specifically, before we even talk about three years out and reverse engineering it, I spend a good hour talking about the top 10 reasons why vision is everything. Before you do anything, having a vision becomes, comes before everything. And one of those reasons is that it becomes the anchor in all the storms of your life. So as I told you, you know, my first entrepreneurial um, uh, venture was getting into network marketing, which is not an easy <laughs> business model to get to the top. It's less than 2% that make it. And there's lots of reasons for that. And there were so many days I wanted to quit. You know, six months after I joined the company, my sponsor, who was my best friend from high school, died very unexpectedly. And then, you know, six months into my journey, I was doing really well. And in one month, my entire team quit and I had to start over. So these are the things that they hit you along the way. But the reason I got up the next day and kept going was the vision of what I wanted was bigger than all the storms. And right now, most people are so inconsistent in every area of their life. And it's because they let all the little things, not just the big things, Bernardo, but all the little stuff. Like somebody told them no, you know. Um, someone didn't and, like my picture on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or someone slagged me off on Facebook, who I don't even know who it is. Right. Yeah. All yeah. the things that they are letting them just stay you know, so inconsistent. And, you know, now when I speak, I ask people, do you have a focus problem? And most people laugh when I ask that question, because most people are, oh yeah, I, I have a really hard time with boundaries, really big problem with setting boundaries. And it's because they get pulled in so many directions. And it's because again, they don't have that clear path of where they're going and they don't have that anchor. So, you know, when my husband died, of course, took some time off to 
maneuver my kids and get us situated and all of that. Um, and then when my son died, I took a full year off just about, but I always knew I was going to come back to this. And now, you know, of course it's 10 X for me because what I talk about is, as we've talked, as you and I have uh, now said, you know, this is an epidemic thing. And I believe that people without vision do get really lost. Mm. Yeah. It, it is, it is, it is so important. I mean, I, I, I believe obviously that kind of one of the most important aspects of, of personal professional growth is, is really about thinking. You know, yeah. I've seen so many people that read all these books, attend all the seminars and, and, mm. and, you know, kind of they, they, and, and make many notes and then they hardly implement anything or nothing. Right. They, they, they're not thinking about the quality of their thoughts or they're not actually asking themselves really empowering questions. They haven't got a vision. They haven't got a purpose in life. So obviously they're, they're going to struggle and, 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 and I think that's just one of the, the most essential or quintessential things I think of personal professional growth. That's why I think that what you're doing is, is, is of great service and, and, and needed uh, very much. So, you know, mm -hmm. congratulations to you and congratulations to like, you know, obviously kind of reinventing yourself and, and obviously mm -hmm. having hit rock bottom. I, I'm also a great believer that it's never too late to start all over again. And uh, I also believe that, you know, realistically reframing and understanding that wherever we are in life which might be difficult and challenging we're always much better off than so many other people you yes know, and we're talking billions of people you know yes and 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 this pity you know mentality that a lot of people have oh why me why me well you know mm -hmm. seriously you know people would bite your hand and and or basically you know they would take your hand because they haven't even got a hand or right. they would, or well, they would take your vision or they would take your internet, whatever it is right. that you have in order to, you know, to, to do what you're able to do today. Right. Yeah. So many people ask me, you know, how in the world are you and your daughter still functioning? And the first tell, thing I tell them is because that I have a vision that overrides everything that's happening. Um, I know what my purpose is. And the other thing is that, yeah, there's always so many people that are so much worse off. And yeah. we just have to be grateful for what we have. Absolutely. So that your, was it, was it your first book was called vision is victory? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then my daughter and I just launched our book that we started in March. It came out on November 11th. We had a huge book launch in Arizona where I live. That's 11, 11 is my son's birthday. So we knew we wanted to write the book. We chose that date because it's special to us. So so we've done um, a three city book tour. We were in Arizona on November 11th, and then we went to Denver, which is where we're both from. Uh, and we're getting ready to do one here in Oklahoma City in a couple of days. So let's keep looking up. It's called Keep Looking Up, and it's also on Amazon now. Brilliant, congratulations. Well, Thank Keep you. Looking Up sounds like a great title. And you see a lot of people that do look down, look up, mm. and, um, and look into the future of life. So where we are is obviously, Kerry, you're gonna be, uh, speaking at the expo and we're obviously very excited about that uh, now a lot of the things that we've been talking about here today is about helping people identify what their purpose is uh, and understanding about time and, and we also talked about a lot of the stuff that we do at the legacy club to help people identify what that purpose is what are you going to be doing at the expo what are you going to be sharing over there uh when you come and join us in uh, in la in uh, in march Yes, very, very excited to be at this expo. You know, it's um, <clears throat> the work that I do is tried and true. So I'll stick to the foundational things of talking about the top 10 reasons why you have to have a vision and why when you actually write one in as much detail as I've walked a lot of people through how it can fix just about anything you're dealing with in your personal and your professional life. So it'll be very powerful. And I really want to get people to actually start writing one because like you just said, I'll send them home with the workbook, Bernardo, but they won't, you know, it'll sit on a shelf and not get it done. So I want to really get people to get it out of their head and on paper um, because it's a game changer for the rest of their year. Uh, so obviously you, you've, you're driven, you've got a, a clear vision um, and a mission in life. So what would your advice be, you know, for someone that, you know, is, is struggling Mm. Um, with adversity, challenges of life or whatever. And, you know, I don't know, they're not seeing, they're not seeing a way forward. What, what would your advice be? Well, a lot of reasons that happens. One is that they are leading a life that somebody else put them on. 
or they were told that was going to be the best path for them. Uh, so my first piece of advice is that you really have to listen to yourself. And we live in a world also that is a lot of comparison and a lot of competition. And we have to kind of really shut that out because we're all in this together. We're all, we all have adversity. We all have stories. We've just got to realize that we've got something that we're called to do. And I really want to encourage you all to, first of all, know that. I don't know that a lot of people really know that they were sent here with a mission and something that only they can carry out. So the first thing I would tell you is please believe that because I truly believe that each one of us were given something we were to accomplish while we're on this earth. And if you first believe that, then the second thing is to go to work to, at listening to your own heart. It's tapping at you. And a lot of people you know, they've got this little tap, tap, tap going on. They, they feel it when they go to bed. It's nagging at them all the time, but they're not, they're not following through. Pay attention to the tapping. My biggest mission, the biggest, one of the reasons I do what I do is because I hate when people die with regret that they didn't follow their true path. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, um, and, and I think that's part of it. I, I really believe that, you know, kind of we, we, we have to really explore and focus what our purpose is. And, uh, you know, we have many loved ones that unfortunately, you know, leave us uh, earlier mm -hmm. or later. And, and, and sometimes these are waking up calls or, or turning points for people to, to decide to take action. But why do we have to wait so long? And, right. and also that is just we have to appreciate our own mortality. So I, I think, I think my, 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 my take on this is, is that I, I, I believe that everyone, particularly, you know, either the leaders, the thinkers, the coaches, the trainers, and, and us as individuals, we're obliged to become the best version of ourselves in right. order for us to not only live a fulfilled life, but to inspire others. Because I think exactly we, 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 we sometimes tend to forget that there are people around us that, that are looking up to us for oh, inspiration, for, 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 for guidance, you know, uh, and, and it's by you becoming that leader, for you, you becoming that person that's inspiring people that can have a phenomenal ripple effect. And mm -hmm. that's the whole idea of what you do or what we do, what personal development is about, what, what the Legacy Club is all about. is about combining people to think, to spend more time thinking about what their purpose is and focusing and making sure that these things happen. Right. Yeah. I've started saying that a lot lately to the people that are about my age that are too afraid to write their vision. They've got too much fear, too many stories going on as to why it's it's not going to happen, not the right time, it's too late. And I tell them, you know, but there are people watching you and they're the people that you love, that you want to go carry out their vision and purpose, but you need to give them permission. If they're watching their parents, let's say, not carry out theirs because they're too afraid and, you know, using all the excuses, it gives them the license to carry the same excuses that make sense. So I've been saying a lot, especially to moms lately, you've really got to pay attention that your kids are watching you and what you do, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. That be well, we, we know this as parents. I mean, you know, all of a sudden, you said a couple of times a swear word, and all of a sudden, kids are just dropping out. Kids <laughs> is phenomenal. They're sponges. They learn so much. So we tend to think that, that just because they're a little bit older, or just because they're, they're grown-ups now, that they don't necessarily still look up to us, and the, the fact is they do. I know my kids look at me sometimes and think, he's an absolute lunatic. Well, what is he up to now? You know, yeah. What, you know, when is he going to start chilling out or relaxing? Well, the fact is, is that I want to carry on pushing the boundaries of what is or is impossible. And I don't have any, any intentions of settling down. Now, you know, am I an inspiration of them to not? But I'm trying to live my fulfilled life. And I hope that whatever I do, because I know from an entrepreneurial point of view, I can see it's affected some of my kids. You know, I know it's going to have an impact. And, and as you was pointing out, if you're not doing it for yourself, at least maybe do it for your kids, your families. And your exactly. Life. Yeah. Exactly. It's the legacy that we leave. Absolutely. So um, anything, well, my, I, I want to, I've got a couple of last questions I want to end with you. Anything else you would want to add re related to purpose, uh, related to kind of what, what personal development means to you and, and, and why kind of you do what you do? I think it's just this place in life that we are right now where we've become so separated from each other and it comes, it's driven again by scarcity, competition, um, unfortunately, a system that still raises us to go after rewards instead of figuring out who, what our purpose is. And I really am encouraging people right now to get on a new movement um, along what you and I are doing around, you know, figuring out who you are 
and what your purpose is and being brave and bold enough to start with even a baby step today. It doesn't need, you know, three-year visions scare people. So what happens when they write it is they look at it and go, okay, that's not possible with where I am right now. Of course not. What you need to do right now today is just start taking some baby steps towards, you know, whatever. If you want to make a job shift, Google it today and figure out, go research a couple of things you're interested in and see what the next best step would be. So it's just got, you've got to start somewhere and don't put it off to tomorrow because we're, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. There'll be another thing tomorrow. Absolutely. And, um, and this brings me to kind of my, my two key words, both starts with legacy and love. I yeah. think it is down to love. Uh, I think what we need more, I mean, I, I'm a, I believe in the same kind of things in a time when we're supposed to be more connected than ever. We're very disconnected. We feel very alone. Um, very many lonely people out there, even if they've got a hundred thousand followers. So mm -hmm. I, I think, I think kind of the idea is, 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 is back to concept, back to basics and it is around love. So, you know, yeah. loving yourself, loving your friends, loving your, your loved ones, expressing love, in, in any shape, way, or format. It might be in, in a gesture, a kindness, in a word, in, 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 in anything. But I, yeah. I think, you know, we need, to, we need to be spreading a lot more love around the world because it's, it's what really makes a difference and what makes us feel alive. Yeah, it's all yeah. that matters. It's all that matters, absolutely. <laughs> so um, what would you like your, and this is kind of my last question to you, what would you like your, your legacy to be in, in many, many years from now? Mm -mm. Well, everything I'm structuring, what I do now, Bernardo, is to make such a big impact, especially again in the young adults that I want to start working with over the next few years. Because right now, you know, I can only do so much with the life that I have left. And it could, you know, it, it could have been just me doing workshop, workshop, workshop. Now what I want to do is empower a whole new generation of people who are being brave and bold enough to carry out their own purpose and learn how to write their vision, that they'll teach it to others. Most especially the kiddos they're about to start having because you know we've got a generational breakdown that has happened to about this point. And I wanna completely flip that around and see some new generations that are rising up that are starting out really, really young with knowing who they are and what their purpose is. Well, um, that's beautiful, and I and I really believe that that is that is um, that is part of of it is is educating the younger generation and bringing you know the, the the younger generation into the rooms. Again, it's down to the parents to to show them the way. But right. I, I think we need to have these conversations, teach these skills, because you know, you know, if not, that they, they seem to be even less in touch with reality than 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 our generation was. Right. Unfortunately, we had a, a decent upbringing because we didn't have any mobile phones with us you know so we could actually enjoy life play out on the street and do things right. so I, I think i think that's a beautiful thing there's a quote that we actually had on our uh, legacy club uh, uh, instagram the other day it says what's legacy it says it's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see it's a quote from hamilton mm -hmm. so i love that i love what i love what you're doing and 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 you you are planting seeds on a daily basis uh many seeds and uh, it's, it's just an honor uh, and a pleasure to, to have you speaking at the Expo, sharing your mission, sharing this interview. And I will do everything I can to help you, uh, you know, continue to share and, and spread the word to as many places wow. as possible. Thank you. Well, I'm honored. And um, I think the reason you and I connected so quickly is we have the same passion and the same purpose. Absolutely. And, and, and I think we've said this, you, you know it, I know it, you know, but nothing everything happens for a reason okay yeah we met for a reason we were both there for a reason uh, and and i think one of the things i really encourage people when i work coach mentor people i would say open your senses because you know mm -hmm. sometimes there's opportunities you know there's a book that just landed on a table next to you there's someone that you just met and said or connected right. every single thing happens for a reason so if we start opening our senses to that and start trying to identify what is the universe trying to tell me of it What's actually happening here? And we explore and go into these journeys. It, it just takes us on this beautiful waves of, of beautiful futures. So okay. that, that's, 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 my, that's my advice. So we obviously met for a reason and I'm delighted we did. Yes, agreed. Well, thank you so much, Gary. I am very you. excited. This is great. And I hope to see you soon. I'll, I'll be back in LA, um, I don't know, in, in the new year, uh, if, if everything goes well, but at the moment, um, I hear, I'm here in Spain thanking you so much 
Well, uh, thank you. you. It's my honor. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, everyone listening, watching today, thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Lots of love.